Good morning, snowed in. The northeast is hit by a nor'easter, bringing snow and coastal flooding. Could another nor'easter be on the way? Ballon is tracking the latest. A space oddity. After space travel, NASA scientists conclude that Scott Kelly's DNA no longer matches his twin brothers. What NASA is saying needs to be done before further space travel. And happy St. Patrick's Day. Celebrate the Irish holiday with us. Coming up, we'll tell you how you can celebrate in Muncie. Get the coffee ready and open up those eyes. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. From Ball State Unified Media, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather. With Nathan, Tanner, Emerson, Katie, and Ballant. Live from the Ball State Weather Center. And good Friday morning to you. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. I'm Tanner Holbrook. I'm Emerson Lehman. And I'm Katie Parker along with Balance Salivari. Thanks for joining us. And you guys, we have a big show today, but first we do begin with that powerful nor'easter that hit the East Coast. The storm caused heavy snow and coastal flooding, some locations receiving as much as 24 inches. NOAA's GOES East satellite spotted the nor'easter from space, hammering parts of, the, of New England and the Northeast Tuesday. Weather forecasters worry that there could be another one on the way. That's right, Talent Ballot now has a look with our national weather of the potential storm coming up. Mm -hmm, that's correct, and you know, honestly, those are some beautiful images right there. Of course, devastating in terms of human impact. However, we could be seeing another snow system start to develop here. That's going to carry through the overnight hours, but currently here across the nation, 43 degrees in Kansas City, 33 in New York, 47 in Atlanta, and 64 degrees in Dallas, Fort Worth. As the day progresses, it's going to get quite toasty in the southern portions of the United States, 81 degrees in Dallas. I wish that was the temperature here today. We're going to be sitting right in the lower 40s and 35 degrees in New York. Now, in terms of the severe weather outlook, Atlanta and areas just north in the northern Carolina region and just north of Houston in uh, the eastern portions of Texas are seeing a marginal risk for severe weather. However, the bigger picture is taking a look at all the winter weather warnings and advisory we have in effect all the way through the Ohio River Valley, including parts of the northern Great Plains. That's where that snow comes into play. So uh, more locally here, though, for tomorrow from midnight until 9 a.m. Our northern viewing counties are under that winter weather advisory due to snow. So here's that low pressure system. You can already see quite a very uh, quite a large variation in terms of precipitation. Heavy showers in front, then some isolated uh, freezing rain, including snow. So that's going to continue to back build as it works its way further east through the next uh, several hours and even into Muncie. That's going to continue to get its act together. And you can see even more snow starting to form up towards Halifax and New York. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two systems start to develop within the next 24 to 36 hours. So another uh, pretty, not to say substantial, but another snowfall impact is going to be working its way into the Pacific or the Atlantic Northeast within the next 24 hours to 36 hours. Thank you, Ballant. And the most recent winter blast has Boston frozen. And the star character from the movie Frozen, the famed Princess <coughs> Elsa, made a guest appearance in the snow-covered city Tuesday. Well, it was actually a man dressed as Elsa. He came to the rescue when a police wagon got stuck in a snowbank. <laughs> <laughs> police, uh, People Magazine reports that the man's name is Jason Triplett, a 37-year-old <coughs> Boston attorney. <coughs> Switching gears a little bit, sad news for the uh, physics community this week. The man widely considered to be the world's greatest living scientist has died. Stephen Hawking was well known for his science contributions and books, explaining everything from the Big Bang Theory to black holes. He spent much of his l life confined to a wheelchair as he was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease nearly five decades ago. He surpri surprised doctors across the world as he was only expected to live a few years after his diagnosis. Hawking leaves behind three children and three grandchildren. He was 76. Trips to Mars might not be too far into the future. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX and Tesla, spoke at the South by Southwest conference in Austin, where he said he thinks that it is possible to send people to Mars. Musk also said that for the, people, for the first people who go, it will be difficult and, quote, excitement for those who survive. Musk and SpaceX have said that the plan to send people to Mars could launch within the next few years. 
NASA will see a leadership change soon. Robert Lightfoot, the acting administrator of the organization, announced his retirement earlier this week. Lightfoot will leave the agency at the end of April. The announcement puts pressure on the Trump administration and the Senate to secure long-term leadership for NASA. The White House nominated Representative Jim Bridenstine last September to take over. Bridenstine's nomination has been approved by the committee overseeing the agency, but is hung up in the Senate. Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio opposes the bid because he wants a science professional to lead the agency. And coming up, uh, an update on those affected by a hurricane earlier this year. Plus, we'll take a look at what was happening in weather history on this day. That's after your weather now. up with Cardinal Weather on this Friday morning. The Amazon Echo can play your favorite playlist and give you the day's headlines, but it can also help you prepare for the weather. Alexa's skills like AccuWeather or Big Sky can give you your forecast before you head out the door. Want to know if you should wash your car or not? There is a skill for that as well. The skill Car Wash looks at the forecast and lets you know if it is worth the time and money to wash your car or if you should wait. Skills like AccuWeather can also let you know if there is any weather alerts in effect for your era, area, excuse me, and Tanner and Nathan are standing by in the newsroom this morning to talk more in detail about these skills and how they can aid in the event of severe weather. We have Alexa here. Uh, Nathan, go ahead. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. Yeah, so a lot of people find this particular tool useful for those day-to-day -day tasks. Okay. So reminders, adding things to a list, or asking those basic math questions like what's 2 plus 2, which equals 4. Those types of questions are really beneficial for okay. these types of products. And we've really seen this increase in these types of products being in homes and being mm -hmm. adapted in not just one room in the home, but multiple rooms in the home. And so a lot of times we use them for those tasks, but we're starting to see a shift in thinking that these can actually do more for us in the weather community to be able to help people be better prepared for the weather that's affecting their area on a day-to-day -day basis and also prepare people in the event that severe weather would happen on a day that we'd say is a severe weather action day. All right, so let's uh, take a few questions for, uh, I don't want to say her name because she's going to wake up. And I know, that's our wake for today, <laughs> so we got to be careful what we say here. All right, go for it. I don't, I don't so, know what some of the so are. One of the skills that people find the most beneficial is made by AccuWeather. We've mentioned Big Sky and AccuWeather is the mm -hmm. two top leading skills that are designed for this particular product. AccuWeather has actually developed their skill for the Echo to be able to provide warnings and alerts to you. Okay. So it'll light up amber, it'll have an amber ring when there is a warning that had been issued for your area and you could actually ask her what that warning or advisory is. In this case, we're just gonna say, hey Alexa, Ask AccuWeather what my weather will be like today and here. So obviously we have to be really certain about our skills and how we do that. So I always like to tell people, if you always forget what the skill title is, you can actually go into the Alexa app itself and it'll tell you what oh. that key phrase is. So this morning I asked her kind of what the weather forecast was and she provided that to me, but it could also be location based. So if you're taking her on the go or taking off to different places, you can have that skill that's enabled with location services. Gotcha. In most cases, most people find it useful just to use Amazon's version of weather by just asking, hey Alexa, what's the weather? She can provide a certain degree of information to you about warnings and advisories. She's, she's, listening. she's still listening to me, of course. <laughs> but those types of things are cool because 
it's allowing people to connect with something that uh, is going to be able to provide information to them on the go and in a flash. So one of the things that I actually was reading was that Alexa can actually alert family members or specific contacts if you're in a trouble situation. Correct. There is a skill that's out there on the marketplace. It's still uh, working through those development stages. Um, I don't have the exact name for that skill, but there is a skill out there that is allowing you to say, notify my contacts in an emergency situation that can push a notification to those contacts. All right, all great things. Amazon uh, Alexa and Echo Dot is yep. available on Amazon. Katie? Visitors to the nation's capital will have to wait a bit the longer to see the world-famous cherry blossoms. Experts with the National Park Service now say the peak blossom will happen between March 27th and the 31st. That's about 10 days later than first predicted. Colder than normal temps are being blamed for the delay. The annual Na National Cherry Blossom Festival marks the 1912 gift of cherry trees from Tokyo's mayor to the city of Washington, D.C. And now it's time to take another look, full look at your weather balance. Well, believe it or not, we're going to see um, some nice temperatures, or, or well, I guess of about average temperatures, so to say. However, taking a look from our live cam this morning, a beautiful sunrise in store, hardly a cloud in sight. And then currently temperatures here in Muncie are sitting at 22 degrees, northeast winds at 7 miles per hour. Across the state, temperatures sitting right around the 25 degree marker, mid-20s, 25 in Indianapolis, 25 in Shelbyville, and Bloomington sitting at 28 degrees. When we do factor in wind chills, though, it feels about 10 degrees colder. It feels like temperature of 14 degrees in Indianapolis and 13 in Muncie. And that's partially due to those northerly winds allowing colder air from Canada to move in now. As the day progresses, we're going to see temperatures work all the way up to 42 degrees by the 5 o'clock hour. Plenty of sunshine in store all throughout the day, though. And then the forecasted highs for today, 43 here in Muncie, 46 in Indy, 48 degrees down in Bloomington. Then as the overnight hours progress, we're going to see some snow chances work their way back into the overnight hours right at the freezing point in terms of the overnight low. So we could see a nice mixture between snow and rain. So let's go ahead and break that down. This is that low pressure system that we're going to go ahead and track through the next 24 hours. You can already see the nice combination of rain and snow. Currently there are some winter weather advisories in effect that carries over to portions here in Muncie. Uh, that's going to be in effect from midnight all up until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning for the northern counties within our viewing area, including Blackford, Jay, and Grant. So on precision cast, you can see here by 6 a.m., a nice variation in terms of precipitation type. These pinks indicating where we could see that freezing rain, then the blues, snow, rain, and those greens. So we could see some slick road conditions through the morning hours for St. Patrick's Day. However, by around 530, you can see this starts to clear further up to the north. A few isolated showers still sticking around that I-70 corridor, and then we'll see clearing conditions start to set in by the evening hours at 8 o'clock. So for tomorrow, of course, it is St. Patrick's Day, so got a great graphic. Check that leprechaun doing a little jig there. Uh, temperatures for the morning hours are going to be right around 35 degrees, and of course, that precipitation still coming into play for a large portion of the day. Some clearing conditions start to ensue for the evening hours, 43 degrees for the high tomorrow. Then and for the seven day forecast temperatures are going to climb back up. So a nice finish to the weekend though, 54 degrees with plenty of sunshine on Sunday and then the 50s still stick around through Monday. Some more sunshine than our next system starts to work in on Tuesday and Wednesday. So I know St. Patrick's Day isn't looking the best. However, Sunday is still looking pretty hopeful for a nice day. All right, Balan, thank you very much. Time now for your weather history. On this date through the 21st, back in 1885, Point de Monts in Quebec, Canada received 98 inches of snowfall. That's right, 98 inches. I cannot imagine that much snowfall in just a three-day period. And then moving to 1942, a deadly tornado outbreak across the central and southern U.S. left 153 people dead and at least 1,284 people injured. 13 F3 tornadoes were reported along with uh, some F4s and F5s as well. And now, coming up in our trending segment, Popular Singers in Hot Water. That's after your weather now.
You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. Back now at 8.15, it's time to take a look at what is trending now. Yes, that's right. Beyonce and Jay-Z are on the run again. Have you guys heard the news? Uh, Big news. Yeah, big, big news. news I hear. Yes, they are going on tour Ooh, uh, yet again yeah. this year, actually. The so Carters good. have announced the dates for their second on the run tour, kicking off June 6th in the UK. While the first 15 stops will be out of the country, the tour will find its way back <coughs> to the United States with 21 concerts starting July 25th in Ohio. Well, Ohio's not that far. Yeah, no. I've never been. Maybe we yeah, <laughs> I, I haven't looked at the tour dates. Are there any in Indy at all? Well, Indiana? We we'll have have to, in we'll the surrounding to, area? We'll have to peek into it. Yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah, right? But any, anyway, moving on. Miley Cyrus has been hit with a copyright wow. infringement lawsuit. Ooh, no, no, uh, no. American songwriter Michael May, Jamaican, I'm sorry, songwriter Michael May claims some of the lyrics in Cyrus's hit, We Can't Stop, is very oh, similar to his man. reggae track, We song. Run Things. I know, it's really sad. He filed the complaint in federal court in New York Tuesday. It says the 2013 song owes its chart-topping popularity and its highly lucrative success to May's work. May is asking the court to prevent <clears throat> the song from being sold, distributed, or performed. Court documents do not specify an amount requested in damages, but May's attorney said Wednesday that about thirty million dollars, three hundred, I'm sorry, million dollars would be a reasonable compensation. Yeah. Representatives for Cyrus's for Cyrus have not responded to a request for comment. It's quite a hefty lawsuit to I say know. that. Was, but the thing is, that song's from 2013. It's 2018. Why would you wait five years to file? I don't know. He wanted question. to get he wanted to get that money rolling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get, get, the, get the value up a little bit. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> All right. Well, we have Alicia Barnarcher standing by in the newsroom with some cooking for us this morning. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, guys. And we're here with cook Cooking. And we are going to be making some overnight oats. It's oatmeal, whatever kind of milk you prefer, some sweets, so either chocolate chips, you can add in some healthy ingredients like nuts, almonds, chia seeds, and your favorite fruits. So the one that I made today has strawberries, chocolate, and chia seeds. So what chia seeds are really great for is they help lower your blood pressure and they help your digestive system. So I'm gonna help you guys make some overnight oats. Ooh. We're gonna start our off overnight with some oats. oatmeal. Oh, we even got ball jars ball in here. Jars Plugging because, Ball State University. Yeah. Does anyone else have troubles with the ball jar lids? Like they always fall out. Yeah, I always are, they are kind of awkward. They trick me. Yeah, okay, so you just pour the oats in here. Yep, halfway through the jar. Amazing. Over in here, Katie. Sorry. Thank you so here, much. You can take that one. Okay. Oh. And then. So what's your guys' like favorite fruits? Because I have some different well, combinations. Well, strawberries. I, I love I'll, strawberries. I'll, I'll, I'll strawberries eat strawberries. See, I'm not really a As long big. as they're not green, right? As Tana? long as they're not green. Yeah. Yeah. I do like kiwi, though. Kiwi? Do you like kiwi? I've um, never had a kiwi. One oh. of my favorite combinations is it's strawberry kiwi. and kiwi with some almond milk. Really great, refreshing. In your oatmeal? Yeah, in my oatmeal. Okay, so you put it in your morning you oats. So you have your oats. And then if you guys want to add, if you have a sweet tooth, you can add chocolate chips. Oh, yeah, let's bring that over here. Grab the chocolate. Is there no whipped cream? Go ahead and jump the No whipped cream today, there. guys. It's not my cheat day. So you want some sure. strawberries? No. <laughs> hey, please. Okay. So really? the chia seeds, like I mentioned, are really great for your digestive system and lowering your blood oh, pressure. Plus, yeah, they're also great cheese. for your dental health. Dental health? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, but be sure to floss them out of your teeth <laughs> and brush your teeth after you eat them. <laughs> and then, so how much, how much uh, chia would thing. you put in this? Put um, some just a decent chia. amount. Oh, a lot. Um, probably about like a <laughs> tablespoon. And then you can add whatever kind of milk. I'm lactose intolerant, so I prefer to go with almond milk. So. Gosh. Okay, we're gonna have a few of these. <laughs> Can you pour some more in mine, Luna? Yeah. Oh, is that enough? Is that um, too much? You're going to want to put a little no, bit more. You'll sure fill no up tips? about halfway, well, right? and it's then you'll put on the peer lid. Peer pressure? You only live once. And you just need to put <laughs> on the lid and put it in the freezer for about two hours, and then you'll have breakfast okay, ready for the morning, guys. Almond milk? Yeah. So then, do you eat this cold or do you heat this you, up in the oven? You can or in heat it up in the microwave if you wanted to, or you can eat it cold. But either way, it's a great and healthy breakfast and you that you can customize. Can you, can you shake it up? You can shake it okay. up. You can do whatever. I don't think I'm going to shake it. Stick it in the fridge. I put a lot of chia seeds. And you're ready to go, guys. Yeah, I'm going to eat this later. All right, Alicia, thank you. <laughs> thank Ball you jar with oats in it. <laughs> easy, right. simple. E it's pretty easy. Affordable. Yeah.
This Ooh. is awesome. All right. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Coming up, we've got an update on the campus dining with some interesting cuisine. That's after your weather now. And a look at the madness that is March. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. Welcome back. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. Ball State's first mobile dining option set up shop today just outside Prue's Hall. The food truck highlights sustainability and a health variety of food options. The cups, uh, packaging, and even the employee shirts are all made from recycled materials. And the truck uses electric power. Customers can choose between some, a variety of different sa sandwiches, salads, and burgers. The food truck will be open from 11.30 to 1.30, Monday to Friday. Students can use meal swipes at the truck. And it honestly sounds like a great option if you want to eat healthier on campus. But moving on, we do have our friends here bringing it in for some madness talk. We have Robbie General, Demarcus Brookins. Katie Park, if you want to come back in here. And we even have Andrew Smith on our head of the community segment. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. So March Madness began yesterday, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, it was busy yesterday with the beginning of the NCAA tournament. The Madness will continue today with more first-round games. Now, we're joined now by the Daily News' Robbie General and Newslink's Demarcus Brookins. Demarcus, Robbie, thank you for joining us. So I understand there was a few upsets yesterday. Yep, Buffalo beat Arizona. Uh, ruin a lot of people's brackets. Um, they were the second biggest win percentage by a uh, number 13 seed over a number four seed since uh, 1985. Hmm. Uh, it was a big win. Uh, now they have to look forward to Kentucky, who will be in the next matchup if, if that they play. I can tell you that I certainly had Arizona picked for that one. I don't know about anyone else, but... Yeah. I did, yeah. Yeah. I had Arizona in my Final Four, and that was one of two upsets yesterday. Really, there wasn't any other ones. I wouldn't consider 9-8 Virginia Tech over Bama one. But the other one, really exciting midday action. Number 11, Loyola Chicago taking on Miami. Last second shot from senior Dante Ingram. He was 3-for-8 on the day. That man 3-for-8, he's shooting 40% <laughs> on the year. And this Rambler squad is going to be one to look forward to. they got two seniors averaging more than 10 points, two juniors averaging more than 10 points, and a freshman averaging more than 10 points. And 36% of people actually had the Ramblers in that game. So a pretty common upset there, but another one that could have busted a couple of people's brackets. All right. So I understand, too, that there's, like, predicting a perfect bracket's pretty hard. So who has the best chance of winning right now? What are the experts saying? Well, the next upset that we could see could take place today. Number 12, New Mexico State, takes on number 5, Clemson. And over the past couple of years, the number 12 seed has upset the number 5 team each of the last two years and 29 of the 33 years prior. Um, so New Mexico State has what it takes to win this game tonight, and I have them winning that, winning that game later. All right, Robbie, so we have time for one more thing. So who do you think is going to win? What are you expecting today? What are you expecting for the rest of this tournament? Yeah, so I mean, New Mexico State, obviously a big upset pick for everyone. But another one not a lot of people are looking at. I mean, you got the 10-7 seeds between Butler, Arkansas, Texas, Nevada. But another one is number 14, Bucknell, and number 3, Michigan State. Michigan State's a team that two years ago got upset in by a 15 seed. And they're another one that, that could fall. Um, Bucknell, senior-led team, three strong seniors. 
leading that team, and seniors always help you in March Madness. So that could be another one to look out for today. All right, Robbie, DeMarcus, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, of course, with NCAA basketball, the big question, of course, is, hey, it's kind of hard to fill out a bracket, so that's what it's like to forecast the weather sometimes. It's quite difficult, of course, especially to get it right. And, of course, the basketball players throughout the month aren't going to be the only ones making it rain. We've got some rain on the national radar right now. Low pressure system starting to develop in the Great Plains right now. You can see a nice variation in terms of the precipitation type. These greens indicating the rains and these pinks and whites. The pinks are that freezing rain and then snow of course is indicated with those whites and blues. That's going to be working its way into our region within the next 24 hours. We already have a winter weather advisory in effect here for our northern viewing counties, including Gray, Jan or Jay, Grant, and Blackford. Excuse me. This is in effect from midnight until 9 a.m. tomorrow due to that snow that's going to be working its way through. So current temperatures across the nation, pretty chilly start to the morning. We're actually colder than Minneapolis here in Muncie. 22 here in Muncie, Minneapolis sitting at 24 degrees, 43 in Kansas City, then Dallas, Fort Worth at 64 degrees. Right now, temperatures are going to steadily climb throughout the day. 81 for Dallas, Fort Worth, Cincinnati, and here in Muncie, we're going to be seeing a high of 43 degrees. Then on the national radar, um, as it progresses through the overnight hours, we're going to see this low pressure system start to continue to develop. That's going to amplify the effect for snow and freezing rain here by Saturday here through the early afternoon or through right around noontime tomorrow. You can see some snow still lingering around and some rain, and that's going to continue throughout the next several days. We'll see clearing conditions afterwards, so a nice weekend in store on Sunday because we'll see highs in the 50s for Sunday and back into Monday. Looking forward to those warmer temperatures, Dallas. Thank you very much. Much Coming up, we break down the science of dreams. And later we have one last look at your local weather, and that's after your weather now. up with Cardinal Weather. Now Cardinal Weather's Liz Sefcheck joins us this morning at the whiteboard breaking down the science behind dreams. Liz, what do you know this morning? Good morning. Good morning guys and good morning to you at home. Right now I'm breaking down the science behind some dreams. As college students we don't really get a lot of sleep, let alone dreams. Usually what ends up happening is a lot of nightmares about exams. But in the evening what ends up happening is a part in our brain called the pineal gland will end up releasing a serotonin derived ho hormone called melatonin. And what that allows for is longer and deeper sleep, allowing for us to go from these cycles of lighter sleep to deeper sleep. But what we're really looking for is this REM sleep right here. What that stands for is rapid eye movement. And that's where all of those dreams take place. Now there's not a lot of research and uh, direct knowledge about why dreams actually happen, but there are some theories that scientists are suggesting. One of them is that learning is a huge factor. If you have a very active learning day throughout the day and your brain is very active, what's going to end up happening is that activity is going to linger on and you're going to have more induced dreams throughout the night. Another thing that's a huge factor is emotions. When we're drifting out throughout the day and our brain's leaning in and out of focus, that also continues on in our dreams overnight. And then we're looking at 
the brain slowing down, going from these areas of lighter sleep to deeper sleep. And as we transition, the brain having a sudden movement between that, allowing for those dreams to kind of be a little bit wonky and allowing for the brain to have loose connections. And the last thing that happens is brain firings, which just suggests throughout the theories that dreams are just random and that there is no explanation for them. That was the science behind dreams. Now let's turn it back over to the desk. Thanks, Liz. Current temperatures here in Muncie as we head out to class this morning, sitting at 22 degrees. Northeast winds at 7 miles per hour, making it feel quite a bit colder. Feels like temperature of 13 degrees. Temperatures are across the state right now. 25 in Indianapolis and Shelbyville. Lafayette sitting at 24 degrees. Then Kokomo sitting at 21. When we do factor in those wind chills, it feels about 10 degrees colder across the state. 14 that feels like temperature in Indianapolis. Now, as the day progresses, we're going to see temperatures start to climb back into the 40s by 4 o'clock in plenty of sunshine in store. Then for the highs across the region, we'll be sitting in the lower 40s, 43 for a great portion of our viewing area. Anywhere from Marion all the way down to Richmond should be in the lower 40s. For tonight, we'll see snow and freezing rain work back into the forecast. A 60% chance for precipitation overnight, 32 for the overnight low. And then that's going to play into St. Patrick's Day in the morning hours, 43 for the high. And then that rain should still linger through much of the day. However, a nice weekend in store on the latter half. Sun Sunday 54 degrees, then 52 degrees for Monday, and then some snow flurries working its way back in for Tuesday and Wednesday, you guys. All right, Balan, thank you very much. That's all this morning for Waking Up with Cardinal Weather. Thanks for joining us. In the meantime, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Have a great rest of your Friday.